Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Are you one of those people that buys homes and flips them for a good profit? Let me show you a project that we took on. This is in Charlotte, North Carolina, and these people just bought the home and it has major structural problems. So much problems that the uh, home inspector and the engineer would not even go down in the crawl space because it was so flooded. So the first thing that we had to do was put a sump pump in and get all the water out just so these guys could come in and take a look at this wall. There was nearly a foot and a half of water that had been sitting in this crawl space for well over a year and a half. And you can see pulling the moisture barrier back, trying to get the sump basin down in. We're putting a temporary sump pump in first so that we can actually pump it dry then we can actually put the new basin and new sump pump in and get this water out so we can actually begin to work on it. Buying a house and trying to resell it for profit sometimes can be a little bit more than you bargain for. And this is a good example of foundation issues. Remember, your house is built from the ground up. The foundation is the most important part of the whole house it holds the house up so we're putting in a temporary basin we're going to go ahead and kick that on pump this out it takes about an hour hour and a half to get this dry and then after it's dry we've got an inspector outside waiting to come in and then the uh, engineer will come in and take a, a look at the wall he'll assess the damage and what needs to be done So let's go back to the beginning and let me show you the first part of this video where we had to actually start with it underwater and pump it out. I think this is one of the most useful videos that you will ever find for crawl space and foundation problems. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're down in an old house, a uh, very old crawl space. They have a sump pump down here in an old tile which doesn't work at all and you can see all the debris slimy mud we've already pumped out the crawl space but we're actually going to put we're actually going to put the sump pump on the other side over there it's a little bit lower and of course we're going down two feet this sump pump this old piece thing that they have in here it's only down about six inches probably a homeowner tried to put it in and it probably helped but it wasn't quite quite right okay so we're going to set up our pump a temporary pump this is still a check valve but the small fitting here will allow us to use the flexible hose so we can pump out that flooded crawl space inch and a half male threaded adapter so when you try to find your fittings for these things remember the sizes I've said it so many times you should remember that this is an inch and a half female so this is an inch and a half male threaded adapter we just screw it on there hand tight. Then we're just gonna attach our flexible discharge. You just push it on there, it's got barbs, but we're still gonna put a, uh, <clears throat> we're still gonna tighten it up with a clamp. This is a 5 16 inch drill bit clamp, stainless steel. It just holds it in place. Now we're ready to go ahead and set our pump down in that bucket, the little hole that Chuck's already dug. We'll set up the extension cord and we'll be able to pump out some of that water. You would think that, you know, over a period of time, two or three years, that this water would disappear, but it's kind of like a swimming pool. The water does go up and down. Can you see the high water mark there on the pier? So it does go up and down, but the water never really disappears. So pulling back the plastic, trying to dig underwater, this is something that you can do yourself, but boy, is it hard. And if you're going to try to tackle this problem yourself, you can do it, but you're going to get muddy. So what we need is a small hole to put that perforated bucket down in, and then we can set the sump pump in there 
with the flexible hose discharged and pump this dry, at least dry enough where we're able to work on it. And this it takes about an hour, hour and a half. Once we put the pump in there, we'll be able to you know dry this out. Remember, there's actually an inspector waiting to get down in here to take a look at that wall. So while it's pumping out, we're gonna go ahead and core. You know, I show you the core an awful lot. This is probably the most important part of this video, you know, of, of not only the video, it's probably the most important part of your crawl space install. You've got to be able to bring that water out through there. And granted, you could pull out the vent, you could knock a hole in it, and we just pulled it out to see what's going on. But it's so much nicer and cleaner to drill it with a, you know, a perfect hole for that PVC to bring that water from the discharge of the pump out through the wall. So let's go ahead and get started. If you don't have a hammer drill, you can easily rent one from your local tool rental. This core through the foundation wall is so important. Easy to do if you have the right There we have it. Perfect hole for our inch and a half PVC to go through there. This is a quite old home and this brick is really brittle, but went right Next through. Next thing we're going to do is set up our sump pit or sump basin. I'm going to go ahead and cut off these nipples for the footer tile. Even though we're not putting a, a perimeter drain, a footer tile in there, I know that this is going to need it, so we're going to go ahead and you know prepare it for that as well. Hacksaw, just cut the nipple off. Real quick, real easy. Next thing we're going to do is uh, perforate the pit, just like we did that bucket, so that water can you know come through the gravel, which will surround the pit. Remember, gravel goes around the pit, water goes through the gravel into the pit, pump lifts it up and carries it out. So now we've got a perforated pit and our sump pump is going to sit down in the bottom of it. As water enters through the gravel, through the holes that we've drilled into the pit, it floods into the pit, sump pump lifts it up, carries it out, and that's why this discharge line right here is so important. When you're working in a flooded crawl space, it is no fun at all. But once you get all dirty, life gets a little easier. And what he's doing is he's putting the bucket in there. It's got the pump in it to help pump out that water. You can see how much water is down in that pit where he's digging. It makes it really hard to dig. While Chuck's digging out that hole, let's take a look at some foundation issues. You can see the pier. You can see how far it's separated. This is water. It's moving that foundation. Look at the foundation wall. Same thing. Such a big crack. This is pressure on the outside, pushing that water, pushing that water towards the wall. And you can see what kind of damage can occur if you don't solve your water problem. So we're ready to set our sump basin down into the hole. What we're doing is we're just checking to make sure that it's going to you know, fit flush at the top. So we turn it upside down just to set it to make sure we've got a good hole. Turn it over, push it down in the hole. We're ready to install. With your sump pit installed, it's time to bring in the gravel. We're actually bringing the gravel in through the vent right above the area that we're working. We're going to pour that gravel all along the outside of the pit. Remember, the pit is perforated, so we want that water to be able to go through the gravel and then into the pit. Now we're going to go ahead and pull out that sump pump. The temporary discharge is on there. We're going to plumb it new, right up and out through the core, and we'll be done. So, we've got everything plumbed, check bow. Riser comes up, going through the wall. Our pit's full of water right now. So let's go ahead and kick this pump on. Then we'll go outside and we will finish plumbing it. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but I hear it. And it kicked it on right away, pumping it right out of here. I even hear little pieces of mud and gravel being lifted up through this pipe. Third of a horsepower, pumps anywhere from 40 to 60 gallons a minute. You can hear that water. That's water filling back up the pit. 
So we pretty much got this covered up and done in here. We just need to get our tools out, go outside, finish plumbing, and we're done. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Okay, so we're ready to install our footer pipe, um, perimeter pipe, foundation drain, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> we call it a footer tile. We've got a good base of gravel down there. We've cut a slice in the end of our pipe so that we can squeeze it together and we just slide it right into the sump pit, into that nipple goes into the pit. All the water that comes down here and gets collected on this wall will now go right into the sump pit. So all the water that's coming down the crawl space because it's all graded this direction will now come here to the sump pit. Some pump lifts it up and carries it away.